Fox News regular and Boogaloo Boy booster Demi Jor has made a really sharp pivot over the course of the last couple of months. And if you look at his channel these days, I mean, it's really clear he's sending his viewers a message. Don't get the vaccine because maybe there are some things that the establishment isn't telling you. He's cherry picking and misrepresenting data when it comes to the efficacy of these vaccines. And if you look at the Infowars page on Rumble, it's almost indistinguishable from Jimmy Dore. But yet this is someone who still LARPs as a leftist while he pushes the far right's misinformation about vaccines. Interesting, right? So in this video clip that we're about to watch, he is going to take a shot at Noam Chomsky. And Noam Chomsky doesn't really say anything that's controversial. Yet, Jimmy Dore takes issue with a particular thing that Chomsky says, and he tries to debunk Chomsky. But yet, it's interesting that Jimmy Dore is irrationally outraged at what Chomsky says, considering Jimmy Dore said basically the same thing six months ago before he began his anti-vax arc. So this is all just bizarre to me, but take a look, and then we'll discuss it when uh, we come back. So, so watch how he gets this wrong. We're talking about the global South not wanting the vaccines, and watch what he has to say. On the left have been concerned that vaccines are not getting to many third world countries. However, I believe that there also is a great deal of skepticism uh, among those populations where they're saying that they, they don't want it, especially in Africa. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on there. Why do you think that there is so much vaccine hesitancy in the global south? Global south, there is overwhelming demand for vaccines. Overwhelming. They are pleading for the West to stop hoarding the vaccines and to let them have them so that they can overcome the terrible effect of non-vaccination. That is the overwhelming majority. Okay, so that's his response, which is, uh, I'm going to say wrong. And why do I say it? Well, here's uh, a headline that says, what is driving the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in sub-Saharan Africa, which goes against what he just said. He said there isn't hesitancy, uh, but there is. We know there is. Uh, here's also who wants COVID-19 vaccination in five West African countries. Hesitancy is high and trust is low. They're not making it available, Chomsky. Why do you think they're not making it available for free to everybody if it's what you say? Why wouldn't Bill Gates and all the big uh, vaccine people make this vaccine available? I mean, right now, Moderna and Pfizer, they're making bill tens of billions of dollars. They can provide this vaccine to everybody. Why aren't they doing it, Noam? What is going on? Why did well, why did uh, Bill Gates tell Oxford to not give away their patent for their? Va why is all this happening? Chomsky doesn't seem to have a critique of fucking anything except well, give except repeat shit lib talking points. Well, very few people on uh, in the what would pass for the left uh, now have a critique of this anymore. It's it, it's strange. Okay, lots of issues with that. Um, first is that it's incoherent in particular that last rant that he went on uh but he misquotes chomsky he says that chomsky said there isn't hesitancy when chomsky didn't deny that there is vaccine hesitancy in the global south of course that's the case chomsky just said that in the global south there's overwhelming demand for the vaccine that we're all hoarding in developed countries that's what he said but yet jimmy Dore took issue with what chomsky said there and he cited an article from the world bank which he very clearly didn't read because if he read just one paragraph he would see that it doesn't debunk what chomsky is saying in fact the vaccine hesitancy that we see in sub-saharan africa which is according to that article that jimmy Dore shared it's comparable to the vaccine hesitancy that we see in the United States. And we're going to read just a couple of paragraphs to show you why this doesn't prove what Jimmy Dore thinks it proves. As African countries accelerate the deployment of COVID-19 coronavirus vaccines, the issue of vaccine hesitancy looms. Globally, there has been a rise in general vaccine hesitancy, but especially towards COVID-19 vaccines. In Africa, hesitancy must be viewed in the context of significant vaccine shortage. Hesitancy does not explain fully the low vaccination rates in Africa. The slow vaccine rollout on the continent is is due to supply constraints, structural issues, and logistical barriers. The critical question is how to increase both supply and demand. A 2020 Africa Center for Disease Control survey in 15 countries found that while 79% of respondents would take a COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine hesitancy ranged from 4 to 38%. 
In a recent five-country Afrobarometer survey, six out of ten citizens in Benin, Liberia, Niger, Senegal, and Togo were hesitant to get vaccinated. Now, without even reading those two paragraphs from this article, I mean, I think it's obvious that anyone who's talking about the Global South knows that Sub-Saharan Africa doesn't represent the totality of the Global South. Furthermore, African countries are not monolithic, as this graph points out, because in Africa, there are varying degrees of vaccine hesitancy. But as the article makes very clear, even if there's vaccine hesitancy, that is a thing, it is a problem, there's still a high demand for these vaccines. And the context is important because in Africa, they don't have access to these vaccines as we do. So even though vaccine hesitancy is an issue, in the United States, it's decreasing because people can see that their friends and family members are getting the vaccine and they're fine. They can see the way in which, uh, you know, if you look at hospitals, the people who are there are overwhelmingly unvaccinated. The people who are dying are unvaccinated. So they don't have what we have currently. They don't have that firsthand experience. And furthermore, they describe why some people in these countries are vaccine hesitant. And largely, it, it uh, you know, it comes down to a trust or mistrust in their government. It comes down to whether or not they have access to social media. It comes down to re religiosity, where some individuals think that prayer is a better uh, solution to COVID-19 than the vaccine is. And many people who have access to social media in Africa, while well, they're seeing the same conspiracy theories that drives vaccine hesitancy here in the States. But there's a bigger question here that I've got to ask. So let's assume that vaccine hesitancy is higher than this article states. Let's say that 80% of everyone all throughout Africa, the entire continent is vaccine hesitant. Does that mean that we deny them this life-saving vaccine? The people who want it shouldn't get it? I just don't understand what the implication of stating that there is vaccine hesitancy is in Africa for Jimmy Dore. What does this mean? Furthermore, he tries to do a bit of a gotcha to Chomsky, but the point that he's making, I mean, I don't even know if Jimmy Dore knows the point that he's trying to make, but he he asks Chomsky a rhetorical question that he eventually answers, but still makes it seem as if Chomsky is somehow wrong. I'm going to read you this. I transcribed this um, because I want to try to make heads or tails of this. Let's see if you can. So we just watched it, but this is what he said. They're not making it available, Chomsky. Why do you think they're not making it available for free to everybody? If it's what you say, I mean, profit. Chomsky is saying we should make it available. Jimmy Dore says, why wouldn't Bill Gates and all the big vaccine people make this vaccine available? I mean, right now, Moderna and Pfizer, they're making tens of billions of dollars. They can provide this vaccine to everybody. Why aren't they doing it? Why did Bill Gates tell Oxford to not give away their patent for? Why is all of this happening? Chomsky doesn't seem to have a critique of fucking anything except repeat shit lib talking points. Now, to suggest that Noam Chomsky is repeating shitlib talking points is bizarre because Noam Chomsky is not a shitlib and he's not a liberal. I'm assuming Jimmy Dore is a liberal because he voted for a capitalist in 2020. He voted for Tulsi Gabbard over the socialist. So if anyone's the shitlib between you and Chomsky, you're the shitlib, buddy. But I mean, I'd rather see someone repeat so-called shitlib talking points than right-wing talking points that drive vaccine hesitancy that end up getting people fucking killed, Jimmy. But I mean, um, the whole point that he's making here, you're proving Chomsky's point. Chomsky is saying we need to be able to allow all of these developing countries to have the recipe so they can manufacture their own vaccines. It shouldn't be about profit, which is the leftist critique. It's a, it's an anti-capitalist critique. So what are you getting at? And again, I don't think Jimmy Dore knows the overall point that he's trying to make. I don't believe this is the gotcha that he thinks it is. And we know this because back in April, Jimmy Dore essentially made the same point about needing to give the vaccine to the global south that Chomsky made, but only now he's taking issue with it. I mean, I'm not making this up. Take a look at what Jimmy Dore said on April 30th. Turns out Bill Gates says no to sharing vaccine formulas with global poor to end the pandemic. Health advocates blast Microsoft billionaire for saying patent protections on life-saving vaccines must remain. I thought this guy was a good guy. I thought yeah. he was one of the good billionaires. What do you He's just a guy who wants to help people. A person hoarding an obscene amount of money is in favor of hoarding other life-saving resources as well? Huh, shocker. I'm noticing a trend.
That is amazing. It's almost like getting that amount of money requires screwing over a lot of people. <clears throat> he doesn't care that 300,000 people are getting corona a day in India. He cares about the safety of the vaccine. Yeah, he's got his talking points down. They pledged to donate rights to their COVID vaccine, then sold them to pharma. So Oxford signed an exclusive vaccine deal with AstraZeneca that gave the pharmaceutical giant sole rights and no guarantee of low prices with the less publicized potential for Oxford to eventually make millions from the deal. Other companies working on coronavirus vaccines have followed the same line, collecting billions in government grants, hoarding patents, revealing as little as possible about their deals and planning to charge up to $37 a dose for potentially hundreds of millions of shots. Wow. And it was funded by government grants, which means all of us. Which means it should be public property. Wait, I'm confused. So are the vaccines life-saving and it's immoral for billionaires to withhold them from the global south so that way they can extract more of a profit from them? Or are these vaccines bad and scary and dangerous and we should withhold them from the global south because there's vaccine hesitancy in sub-Saharan Africa? What's the takeaway? I mean, this was before Jimmy Dore went full anti-vax. So you can see that when he read the article, he actually made sense. It was a good video. And the video was titled Bill Gates denies vaccine to poor countries, implying that that's bad and that the vaccine should be widely available to people in the global south as it is to people in the developed world. But now, all of a sudden, going back to his channel, well, I mean, it's clear he doesn't think that your kid should get vaccinated. He doesn't think that you should get vaccinated. Or maybe there's things about the vaccine that the media and the establishment isn't telling you. I mean, it doesn't matter that most people who are dying from COVID-19 currently are unvaccinated. But, you know, Jimmy Dore, who's vaccinated himself, thinks that others shouldn't do what he did. And what makes this all more bizarre is that he's mad at Chomsky for just making the point that, yeah, we shouldn't be denying these vaccines to people in the global south. There's a high demand for it. I mean, when we all had our vaccines, people in India were begging us for it as the Delta variant ravaged their country. So to say that, Oh, there's no demand for it. It's so strange. Of course, there's demand for it. Of course, vaccine hesitancy exists. But that doesn't mean that we deny the vaccines to everyone in those countries. I mean, vaccine hesitancy is the thing in the United States. I'm not vaccine hesitant. Should I not get the vaccine as well? It's just it's such a weird argument. But this is what happens when you try to create this narrative. He's twisting himself into a pretzel in order to make sure that his new anti-vax viewers get exactly what they want. But it's uh, it's it's gross. It's 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 misleading. It's disgusting. It's opportunistic. And if Jimmy Dore saw this critique, which maybe he will, I'm sure he would retort by saying, well, Mike, you're a shit lib and you're a big pharma shell. And I've seen this a lot from people who purport to be on the left, but they're anti-vaxxers. The thing is that this is a very stupid argument to make because if I'm a big pharma shill for supporting a vaccine that has been proven to be safe and effective and that has already saved hundreds of thousands of lives in the United States alone, then I guess you're also a big pharma shill if you go to the store and purchase Tylenol when you have a headache. I guess that me supporting Medicare for all makes me a big hospital shill because I believe that the government should be the single payer and should be footing the bill for us at these hospitals. Now, of course, I support a UK based system where we nationalize hospitals as well, but I'm willing to support Medicare for all as a compromise. Does that make me a big hospital shill? Does it make Jimmy Dore a big tech shill for posting on YouTube and having a Twitter account? I mean, this is nonsensical. It's intellectually sloppy. It's stupid. This is low IQ shit, right? And maybe he doesn't have that critique of me, but I mean, it's just, it's what I've seen. And what I'm trying to get at is that Jimmy Dore's points about the vaccines is incoherent and it's also inconsistent because to attack, rather smear Noam Chomsky over something you yourself said before you went on your anti-vax arc, it's a little bit um, sleazy. But this isn't the first time that Jimmy Dore has contradicted himself because he actually has a history of saying one thing that's bad and then doing that very same thing that he said was bad himself. Case in point. That's what happens when you have access journalism. I don't have access journalism. I don't do I don't have I don't even know how to do it. It's 
It's Tulsi Gabbard. Hi, Tulsi. How are Aloha, you? Hi, Jimmy. I'm great. It's great to see you. <laughs> This is what it looks like when you're paid to do access journalism and run interference for politicians abandoning their own platforms and supporters. But people are saying, oh, Tulsi flip flopped on Medicare for all. Now, you seem to be not wanting to outlaw private insurance, more like, say, what works in Australia. Everybody, when I was, everybody was really happy with their health care. That certainly is still Medicare for all, but you still are a firm supporter of Medicare for all. I can't wait to see how Ryan Grimm defends this. The beauty of it is, is that it takes away the right wing talking point. It takes the talking point away of, uh, hey, uh, they're going to take away your health care. They're going to take away your health care. They're going to make it illegal for you to get private health insurance, and then the government's going to run in. And so that takes away all that because they're not outlawing private health insurance. And they have this sweetheart deal of access journalism where they do softball mm -hmm. interviews and run interview interference for AOC. I'm a, a surrogate for oh. the Tulsi campaign. Oh, okay. And I guess that's what this is. And I don't ever want to be part of their club. There's a lot of people at the Young Turks who do. Talk, Tucker has the, the biggest show on, the biggest conservative news show in America. So I would like, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to half the country. My mission in this show is to be the antidote of the establishment media, not to be accepted by the establishment media. I do not want to be accepted by them, because if I am, I know I'm doing something wrong. Jimmy Dore, thank you. I'm just, I'm, I bet you any money he's going to get a job at the New York Times. He does this a few more times. He'll be their progressive to cover Bernie and shit on him. But she will mobilize her followers, her 11 million followers, which is a lot of people, to be snitches. And that, my friends, is Demi Jor. So look, Jimmy, uh, we used to be pals. And, you know, I'm sure that if you saw what I had to say, you know, you would uh, you would be angry. But I'm more than willing to have a conversation. I promise I won't sneak on Sam Cedar. Oh, no, Sam Cedar. If you wanted to have a conversation. But I mean, if you're chasing clicks and views exclusively, then you're, you're not trying to get to the bottom of this. You're just cherry picking what you want to manufacture a particular narrative and it's paying off. I mean, you've seen an explosion in channel growth after everyone in, you know, indie media has kind of been stagnating. This is a post-election year, so things are going to be slower as people tune out. But I mean, kudos to you. You know, uh, I'm glad that your channel is doing well, but the question is at what cost and are you actually able to sleep at night knowing that your misinformation and hysteria and fear-mongering over the vaccines might lead someone to not get vaccinated and end up dying it's just it's um it's really gross and i thought that jimmy Dore was better than this but apparently i misjudged him now did you hear me say that ivermectin has been proven to treat covid Hey, can we talk about it? Yeah. I, ivermectin? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's, it, I covered it, what they did in Mexico City, mm -hmm. and ivermectin seems to be a drug that not only treats it, but it will prevent you from getting it. I never said that, did I? I didn't say anything like that. They said, they they misquote, they, uh, they make up a straw man. They say I said things I didn't say, and I'm going to show you that, and it's about ivermectin. Dore commented on ivermectin's effectiveness against COVID-19. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Widespread distribution of ivermectin proves effective in Mexico against COVID-19. This has been suppressed. Didn't say any of this. This is completely made up. You saw what I said about COVID-19. Uh, and now we're finding out that ivermectin treats this. COVID. They're making it up. This this fact check should be censored. So now you know why I have a popular show. Now you know why I have to go to Rumble, which I will be doing. Because journalists and Democrats embrace censorship and cheer it on. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 